Hey to Nelton High School, this is Mr. Aiden and this is the AP Physics Review for Waves and Optics. So let's get to it. Um, waves and optics start with, of course, sound waves and also light waves. And sound waves and light waves are the exact same thing. They do travel differently and they travel different speeds in different mediums. Longitudinal waves are sound waves. They travel in a horizontal type fashion. They have compressions and rarefactions. They still have a wavelength. They still have a frequency as we know. But they actually move faster in more dense mediums. So like uh, the speed of sound is about 343 meters per second. The speed in water is way higher because the water molecules are closer together and that those longitudinal waves are able to bounce off of each other. And in solids they move even faster. But if we move down to transverse waves, transverse waves are light waves. They uh, they move perpendicular to the surface, and they of course have wavelengths, they have um, frequencies, and of course the speed of light is three times ten to the eighth meters per second. Now the thing that they both have in common is both light waves and sound waves exhibit constructive and destructive interference. They, they both have interference going on and we can use velocity equals wavelength times frequency for both of these type problems. If we're talking about standing waves inside a tube like where you're they give you a length and then they say they hear a frequency and then they they give you another length and they and they say they hear the exact same frequency or a resonant frequency we're going to be using the equation. This is not on your equation sheet so you have to know it. The change in the length is equal to one half of the wavelength. At that point you can use the velocity equals wavelength times frequency and solve for whatever you need to find. Okay. Um, this is called a Snell's Law type problem. This is where we have our uh, different index of refractions. That's that n number and we have an equation for that n number. It's on your equation sheet. n equals c the speed of light over v, the velocity of that light inside that medium. And of course that n number is always going to be greater than one because of course the f the uh, the end of air is about one which means that the speed of light and the velocity of light is about the same it's the same ratio but what they do not have on your equation sheet is a nice easy formula that says the wavelength in the air or vacuum over the wavelength of the medium that's equal to your n as well and that can save you a lot of time on the AP exam if you know that equation right there now what happens here is you know, we have reflection and we have refraction going on. Reflection is when it is the exact same angle um, as the angle of incidence. So if the angle of incidence is 30 degrees, the angle of reflection is always 30 degrees. And remember that is 30 degrees to the normal or to that perpendicular. If we talk about the refraction, the refraction is inside and from going from air to water the refraction angle is going to be less because the speed is going a lot slower here. And this is called Snell's Law. We can use Snell's Law equation which is n sine of theta equals n sine of theta. Now there is also a critical angle there and the critical angle is when we take the sine of the theta, that's the critical angle, is the ratio of your two index of refractions. And so because the sine of theta is always a decimal, put the bigger number on the bottom. If you get an error in your calculator, just flip them and find that angle. And we can graph in order to find out the n or the index of refraction, but you can't graph the, the angles. You've got to graph sine of the angle. Sine of theta and sine of theta and the slope ends up being n. Or maybe if you did the wrong ones on the x and y axis, the slope is 1 over n, the inverse. Here's uh, all of our lens and mirror problems. Let's start with a converging lens here and we have two main rays that we want to do with a converging lens. The first one you can put straight through that thin lens and the next one you can go parallel and then it converges in through the focal point. And that's going to give you your image which is right there. And that image of course is real and it's inverted. Now it might be larger, it might be smaller. I know that there's something that you want to remember is when you're at twice the focal length, the image will be the exact same size and the exact same distance away. And that's because we can plug that information into our thin lens equation, 1 over SI, that's the distance of the image, plus 1 over SO, the distance of the object, equals 1 over your focal point. And we also have an equation for magnification, and that is hi-ho, hi-ho, negative CSO, just like the little song that those little dwarfs sang. Okay, 
And um, last but not least, we could graph in order to find our focal length, but we want to graph 1 over SI, we want to graph 1 over SO, not the SI and the SO, 1 over, and the slope will be negative 1, and you can rearrange your equation to, or re equation to give you y equals mx plus b, and the y-intercept is 1 over the focal length. That's where your y-intercept is. Let's take a look at a converging lens where we're at the focal length, and our, our first ray parallel through the converges through the focal length. Our next ray through our middle, and these will never meet up. So objects at the focal point, there is absolutely no image at all on a converging lens. Let's take a look at in front of the focal point. We're of course going to go parallel, then converge through the focal point. We're going to go through the origin, through the middle. And guess what? These are not going to meet up on the right-hand side. So we have to draw dotted lines, and you can see where it meets up. It meets up behind the object, which tells you something about it. it tells you something about the image, that it's virtual. And the difference between real and virtual is real images are where the light rays converge together, where the, right, the light rays meet up. The light rays don't meet up here, so it's virtual. It's upright, and it's larger, and it's larger. Let's take a look at a diverging lens. Diverging lenses, guys, whether you're in front of the focal length, behind the focal length, at the, fo at the focal length, they're all the same. Our first light will go and diverge away at the same angle of, of, as your focal length. Our light ray is, is going to go through the center. These will not meet up on the right-hand side. So what do we have to draw? Our dotted lines. And you can see where it meets up. It meets up in front of that lens, and the image is smaller. It's virtual because the light rays don't meet up, and it's upright. And that looks the same for every single place where you're, you put your object on your diverging lens. It will always be smaller, upright, and virtual. Let's take a look at a concave mirror. Something we have to know about mirrors is mirrors have, of course, if you continue going around in a circle, they have a center. It's called the radius. And if you take half of that radius or half of that center, that's always your focal length. And so with a mirror, a mirrors will reflect, not refract. And so what, what are we going to do? We're going to go parallel and then reflect through the focal length, through the focal point. We're going to go, the next one's going to go straight through the center. And this hits perpendicular to our mirror. So it's going to go through the center, hit the mirror, and go right back at the exact same place. And you can see those light rays meet up, and that image is real. It's inverted and it's smaller. It looks a lot like when we, uh, that first, that converging lens type problem. Now let's look like a concave mirror, but we're going to be in front of the focal length. Remember, if we're at the focal length, we're not going to get anything. No image whatsoever. But here it's going to go at a parallel and then reflect through the focal length. Our next line is going to go straight through the center and it will reflect back at 90 degrees away, and these will not meet up on the right-hand side. And so what do we have to draw is dotted lines, and it's going to meet up on the left-hand side, and that image, of course, is going to be virtual because the light rays don't meet up. It's, it's upright, and it's larger. It's bigger. Take a look at the concave mirror in a spoon, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Let's take a look at a convex mirror, and you can see where the convex mirror's focal length is. It's on the other side. Okay, and so we're going to go, and we're going to go through the center, and it's going to reflect right back. We're going to go parallel, and then it's going to reflect off at the same place as your focal length. And what's going to happen is they're not going to meet up on the right-hand side. So we got to draw our dotted lines, and our, where's our image? It's, of course, going to be smaller. It's virtual, and it's always going to be upright. It doesn't matter where it's going to be. So the convex mirror, guys, and the diverging lens, the exact same problem. And this is the type of mirror you have on your car, your rearview mirror. And, uh, and you can see it says objects in mirror may be closer than they appear because you're going to see a virtual, smaller, and upright image. Those are all of our lenses and mirrors. Um, let's take a look at Young's double slit experiment. Young's double slit experiment is going to be use that equation of the fringes is equal to the m. Guys, don't even forget about the m. The m is just an integer. Wavelength. D, in, uh, on your equation sheet, it says L. That's the distance from the screen from the slits, that big D, over the little distance, the little distance between the slits right there. And what's going to happen is you're going to end up getting 
constructive interference in the middle, destructive interference on those black fringes there. Okay, and so every every multiple you're going to get these fringes. At every half you're going to get a dark uh, lines. And a lot of times they have you draw two different graphs. One graph looks like this with the the showing the fringes between the the white and the black, and another one is showing the intensity, how big those constructive and destructive interference ends up being together. And that's Young's double slit experiment, the main experiment to show the wave nature of light. And the last thing is is thin film interference. That's when we see all these different blues and purples and greens in bubbles and we can find out the thickness of a bubble. And this equation is not on your equation sheet. You have to memorize it. The thickness is equal to the wavelength of the air over four times the wavelength or the four times the index of refraction of the film. Guys, hope this helped out. That is all of waves and optics from beginning to end and good luck on the test. All right, bye. Thank you.